Hello. What we're going to talk about today is a particular mechanism called SN2 mechanisms. So I want to first uh, draw a generic SN2 uh, mechanism, and then we will talk about what all these uh, letters and that number is referring to. So a generic SN2 mechanism is when you take a nucleophile, and in particular, a strong nucleophile, and strong nucleophiles typically have a negative charge. And when you treat that with a, so that's our nucleophile, and treat that with a substrate, let's draw our substrate looking like this. Let's go, and I'm gonna represent LG as a leaving group. And leaving groups can be halogens, and tosylates and other, other species that you'll see as you progress in the course. But leaving group, we're just going to encompass them all. And then we have our dashed hydrogen right there. And let's put in a, a methyl group, all right? something like that. So we have our nucleophile and our substrate. And we're going to do a reaction in which our nucleophile is going to attack our electrophile. Right? And it's going to attack this carbon right here. Now, nucleophiles are electron rich. This carbon is the electrophile because it's electron poor. Now, let's just for a moment put in an element here bromine right here, okay? Now, why is this carbon here electrophilic? Well, it's because this halogen right here is electronegative and it's going to pull electron density towards itself. And so as it pulls electron density towards itself in that manner, that carbon right there is going to get a partial positive. And so we have uh, electrophilic carbon in which our nucleophile is going to take the lone pairs and come in and attack that carbon and form a bond with it, kicking off the leaving group, or in this case, the bromine. So that would then give us our product that looks like this. Our nucleophile just formed a bond with that carbon, and we have our hydrogen there and our wedged our hydrogen there, wedged methyl. And then what fell off? The bromine, which fell off and now is a negative charge, which is a bromide, like that. So if we go back to make this just a more generalized uh, mechanism, we will put our leaving group right here back on, like that. and turn that into our leaving group, like so, okay? So that is the SN2 mechanism. It has two blue arrows, and so that's happening in a concerted fashion. When this nucleophile comes in and attacks, the leaving group leaves. It's more like this nucleophile is coming in and kicking this guy off. Now let's go and talk about why this is called an SN2. The S stands for substitution. So let's write it right here. So S equals substitution. You see what we're doing? We are substituting the nucleophile for the leaving group. The leaving group is leaving, and we're replacing it with our nucleophile. So it's just a substitution. One group comes in, one group leaves. We're substituting it. The N stands for nucleophile. Right. We have a nucleophile attacking an electrophile. So S for substitution, N for nucleophile, and the two the number two, I'll write that down here, 
stands for bimolecular. Bimolecular. Because in this reaction or in this mechanism, we have our nucleophile and our substrate reacting at the same time. Okay. So it's bimolecular because we have two molecules that are coming together. And so when we take a look at the energetics of that, what's happening is if we draw ourselves an energy coordinate system right here, this is going to be my reaction coordinate. Okay. And on the uh, y-axis, we'll have our potential energy. What's happening is that right here, we're going to have our nucleophile. And when that reacts, we're going to... And so that energy level right there is going to be our nucleophile, which is negatively charged, plus our substrate. And I'm just going to write SUB for our substrate. And then that's going to react and turn into our new uh, compound right here. So that's going to be our nucleophile that's bonded to our substrate plus our leaving group that's negatively charged. And I'm going to put that energy level right here. All right. That doesn't look like a negative charge, does it? So that's our leaving group, LG, with a negative charge, what I'm trying to draw there. So energetically, what's happening here is at this point right here, this is our transition state. That's our transition state. And what does that transition state look like? We have our, I'm going to erase this up here so we have a little bit more room to look at this. Let's choose this color here. So at the transition state, we have our nucleophile that's uh, starting to form a bond with that carbon, that carbon. And we have our hydrogen here and our CH3 there. And then our leaving group is starting to leave like that. So at the, at the transition state, we see the nucleophiles coming in when the leaving group is leaving. And that's what you see at that transition state. Okay. So bimolecular is showing us at the transition state that the nucleophiles coming in at the same time the leaving group is leaving. All right, so that's SN2 is a bimolecular reaction. Now, how the nucleophile attacks the substrate is really, really important. So we have two options here that I want to look at. We have backside attack, backside attack, or frontside attack. Okay. So we go back to our example that we're looking at here. We could have ourselves a nucleophile. And we had this molecule right here. Uh, let's, what was it? We had a methyl and a dashed hydrogen right there. I think it, no, the dashed hydrogen was over here. like this, and then we had our leaving group, right? And so we could have something that is going to approach from the backside of the leaving group. So here's the leaving group on this side of the molecule. So if we kind of just take this molecule here and split it down the middle right here, you have this face and that face of the molecule. And the way the nucleophile can approach is from the backside. So that would be from 
the opposite side of where the leaving group is. And that's exactly what I showed you when, we're look when we were looking at the transition state. So it would look like this. Like that. All right. So that right there is an example of backside attack. And you can see it a little bit better in the transition state. We could put those in brackets to imply that we're looking at the transition state here. You can see that the leaving group and the nucleophile are on opposite sides of that molecule, of this substrate right there. Now let's contrast that to back or front side attack. So we could start here. We'll just keep everything the same. H, our methyl, and our leaving group. We, let's propose that the uh, nucleophile does front side attack. So that would come on the same side as the leaving group. Okay. And so the transition state for that approach would look something like this. We would have CH3. And so we would start forming that bond. At, at the same time, we start breaking that bond. Now this approach of front side attack does not happen. It does not happen. The, old, the way SN2 reactions work is backside attack. And we can rationalize that uh, by looking at the fact that this nucleophile, and that nucleophile is, partial, is uh, negatively charged. But in the transition state, it's partially negative. At the beginning of the reaction, this leaving group is neutral, but when it falls off, it's going to have a full-blown charge of negative one. And so it also has a partial negative right there. Do you see how these two partial, positive, partial negatives are on opposite sides of the molecule? But in contrast, if we did the front side approach, we could see that these partial negatives are right next to each other. And that's very repulsive. Like charges do not associate well with one another. And so that approach is high in energy and energetically not favorable. It also just has to do with the fact that this is a reaction that the nucleophile comes in and the leaving group leaves at the same time. And that's called a concerted reaction. And that's going to be really hard to have a concerted reaction here when the leaving group is trying to leave and leave in that space there at the same time something's trying to get in, right? It's really difficult. It's kind of like getting into an elevator when people want to come out. Like, it's just, it's not very efficient, right? And so, what to remember about the SN2 is that it is backside attack every single time. No, none of this. Frontside attack is just a no-no. Okay. Now, this, this backside attack is going to have a consequence to the type of products that you're going to make. So let's say we have a molecule that looks like this. Right. And I want to take that and react it with some iodine right there. No, iodide, sorry. And when I take a look at this molecule here, I realize that this right here is a stereocenter. And when I go to figure out its configuration, I see that it is a S configuration. And when I do this reaction, the product that I'm going to get is this right here. 
and only that product. And when I reevaluate what has happened to this stereo center, it was an S here, and now it is a R over there. What has happened? I've inverted the stereo center. The stereo center was an S, and now it is an R. And this is all because that this, mole, this reaction right here is undergoing a SN2 mechanism. And that SN2 mechanism is backside attack. And so that's going to invert the stereo center. Now, why would it invert the stereo center? Well, it's because this molecule right here has a front face and a back face. The chlorine right here is going to be on the front face. And then what's on the back face? You have a hydrogen that's not dr typically drawn. So if this iodide wants to attack this stereo center, it's not going to approach the front face because the chlorine is already on the front face. It's a wedge. So the approach of this iodide is going to go backside attack where the hydrogen is and approach in from that side. And so that's what you're seeing here is that this iodide nucleophile is going to come in backside attack. That's why it's dashed because it's going to be exact opposite of that uh, leaving group. So if we take a backtrack a little bit, look at this molecule, our chlorine is the leaving group and our iodide is the nucleophile. And so our nucleophile comes in backside attack and gives us only this. You cannot get this isomer. And I got it cut off a little bit, so let's drop below. It is impossible to get this product right here. Why would this product right here be impossible to get? Because the only way I could get that is if this did front side attack. And that's not possible. Okay. So let's take a, a different look at this. Okay. Let's take the same molecule and just look at it a little bit differently, just a different perspective, okay? So let's see if I can do that down below it in a different color here. So let's draw it like this. Let's turn that, we'll just go like this here, our hydrogen, and here's our chlorine. And I'm going to draw the phenyl right there and our methyl like that, okay? So this molecule is that molecule. It's just drawn in a different way, okay? And so when that iodine comes in, to, uh, iodide comes in, it's going to do backside attack. So I'll just use this iodide right here. So that's going to have four lone pairs. That's going to come in backside attack. Okay, leaving group leaves, and that's going to give us a transition state that looks like this. I die, boom, carbon, and like that. So let's make sure that's uh, labeled as a transition state like so, and we can put our partial negatives right there. And what's going to happen now? This is S, and then what's our product going to look like? So our iodide comes in, forms a bond with that carbon. Our hydrogen's there. And what happens here? Okay. That comes out like that. pH CH3. But well, that's drawn a little, ex little excessive there. Uh -huh. 
like that. All right. Now, what's the configuration around that carbon now? That is an R. And we've inverted the stereochemistry. We've went from S to an R. And so what this inversion here has a name, and it's called a Walden inversion. Right there. Right. You can you can see that these atoms right here, the hydrogen, the methyl, and the benzene, all that are on that this side of the molecule. And then where are they? They've inverted to the other side. Right. That's a Walden inversion. The last thing that I want to talk about in this video is a limitation of SN2 reactions. So if we look at this in generic terms, if I have a nucleophile and I'm going to attack a substrate, right. and let's just, uh, yeah, we'll go leaving group right there, right here. Well, we just have a, a one carbon attached to a leaving group, that does in fact go very well, we would get our product. Okay. Like that. Okay. So now let's take a look at if we had the same nucleophile, but now the substrate's going to change ever so slightly. And what I'm going to do is put a R group. And that R group is going to be alkyl, so anything carbon. And, we, and that reaction does, in fact, work. And I'm not going to draw the product. But what we have here is we have a methyl, and now we have what's called a primary carbon. This carbon right here is directly attached to another carbon, and that's a primary. And when we have the leaving group that's, let's say, a halogen, like a bromine right there, we would call that a primary alkyl halide. That works. If we have a carbon now here, and I'm going to replace that hydrogen with an R, like this. We'll stick with bromine, okay? Or any leaving group would work. That is now a secondary alkyl halide, and that does react. That can do an SN2 reaction. But this next one that I want to show you does not work. And so I'm going to kind of just break up, just give myself some space here. If we took that same nucleophile and tried to react it with this substrate, the, and go bromine, that does not react. It can't. It cannot do backside attack like this and kick that off. That does not happen. And the reason why it doesn't happen is due to a steric argument. So if I take these R groups and let's say that by definition, I'm going to say those R groups are methyl groups. So CH3s. But remember, when I draw it like that, it looks very compact. But remember, those hydrogens are coming off like this. And we draw these out. You know? And so what do we have here? There's a lot of steric bulk, a lot of atoms in the way. And so the nucleophile cannot approach the substrate backside attack because there's just so much going on right here. So SN2 reactions can work with uh, methyl halides. Okay. We can turn that into a halide. Can work. SN2s can work with a methyl halide, a primary, and a secondary. But a tertiary 
that would be our tertiary alkyl halide, does not work due to sterics. Now, when you compare the rate at which this nucleophile can attack this carbon or that carbon, these two first two reactions are going to go significantly faster than the secondary alkyl halide, because with the secondary alkyl halide, you have some steric bulk there. And that steric bulk is going to slow down the reaction rate for an SN2 reaction with a secondary alkyl halide. So the, this one's the fastest, this one's the next fastest, and it starts slowing down. And this one, tertiary alkyl halides, no go, does not work. Okay. Now I just looked up at the, com the computer screen there and I noticed that the these hydrogens right here have been cut off. So I'm just gonna make it really small. So, so that whole time I was talking that, that atom right there is a hydrogen and this one is a hydrogen. So I apologize for that. Okay, I think that looks good.